and sit down. Basically, these uh, let's transfer a little light on maybe. Hold on, it's really difficult to see. But these are just like a um, where the catch used to go, and then in there, there's a loop. So, the this is the bit off the back of the seat, and that just hooks over the top and then it stops you bolt it in and it stops the seat from moving forward. And then I can get rid of this as well. So, I've got a Two sets of these I can't move because you don't need that anymore. Hi guys, welcome back. Um, so in today's episode, what we're doing is we're connecting up the seats and making them work. And yes, they do work. Before anyone starts asking, yes, they do work. If you're new here, um, please feel free to hit that like and subscribe button if you like what you see. Um, if you've been here before, thank you very much for returning. It's um, it's a pleasure to have you back. Um. Like I said, today we're going to get these seats in. Um, it's mostly a wiring problem and a programming problem, and it's quite a long journey, and I've learned an awful lot. But anyway, it goes up and down. Oh, it goes up. And it goes down. It's an electrical problem. It's a wiring problem. It's a programming problem. It's nothing that you can't overcome. You need a few basic tools. I say basic, a bit of a pain in the backside to set up, but once you've got them, you'll soon get to grips with them they're fairly easy to use um, and I'll try and detail the steps I'll put together a little um, how-to um, document as well that goes with this and I'll stick in some forums as well because I wasn't able to find anyone that could tell me how I was supposed to do this I've had to work out everything for myself um, but anyway uh, enough waffling let's get on with it I don't think it can focus it can't focus right Right, let's go for it. So, <clears throat> got the seats in. It's very dark. Camera's not picking up. Got the seats in, but the um, controls aren't working. So, the multi-function seats, and the car used to have the sport seats. So, what we need to do is we need to tell the car that it's got a sport seat. So, the first thing you need to do is you need to get yourself this ESIS software. Um, there are lots of different places. Um, I've been googling around and getting on forums and stuff and understanding so <clears throat> essentially what you need to do is you need to add the seats as a vehicle option um, and in order to do that you need to know what the code is so the the multifunction seats are actually what they call the 4MA um, and the sport seats that were in there previously were the the 481 so you need to take away the 4MAs not the 4MAs you've got to take away the 481s and you need to add the 4MAs you need to add a few other little things as well like the bolter control and all that sort of stuff so in ESIS, here we go. I've never done this before. So we're going to connect to the car. Um, I've got an, an Ethernet cable connected to the OBD, uh, which then comes down because I've then got a USB connection. So that's all connected up. Uh, hopefully in a second this will give me a connection string. Hello. Just thinking about it. Game. So I'm going to connect to uh, the the main series is F10. That's not actually the the chassis or anything. You connect by bin, <coughs> by bin, by VIN, and you make sure the series I step is connected. So we're going to connect on that. Takes a little while for it to connect. Connected. Excellent. Okay, so over on the left here, what we want to do is go to expert mode. Because I'm an expert, can't even click on it. And then you come up and you click on coding. And it's up here, focus. Oh, that's bad. Click on coding. So I've already done this little bit. I just haven't written it to the car. Okay, and then the vehicle, what we're going to do is we're going to read the 
the FA. Now the FA is like the vehicle of order. Um, so once we've got that, we're gonna click on the. Now hold on, what are we doing? The, click read under the vehicle order, and then click edits. So we have to save it first. So let's save. I'll call this. Uh, what's the date today? So I'm going to save the file and then once you've saved it, it allows you to edit the file. So it's saved in the default location. Try and get that off the screen. I'm trying to look through the camera while I'm doing this. This is stupid. Right, so then you edit it and that opens up a different editor. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put a link to um, how I've done all this as well because there's some really useful information. So that then pops up and it's in the FA editor. So what you need to do is you right click on the FA. Oh, God, this is impossible trying to do it through the screen. So you right click on the FA and you say calculate FP. Sorry, my screen is such a high resolution. So that should be calculating the down here it says calculating. FP is to be calculated. Dun 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 do 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 takes a little while fast forward through this. I have to get some screen recording software or something. Once this finishes, what it should do is it should populate all this up here with all the vehicle options. Oh, there we go. So now what we do is we come back up here um, and you basically you expand this FA list and you go down to the bottom one and you go down to the type and you want to get down to the salper element. And that gives you all the elements down here. So these are all the option codes that are coded to the car. So if I try and zoom in so it's if it's focusing. So basically what I've added in here is 488, 494 and 4MA and I've taken out the 481. And then what you do is you click on the apply changes which is this button here. So let's make a change. So let's for let's change this 4MA so let's make that change for MA. Make sure that's correct. Apply the changes. Okay, so now what you need to do is you need to verify that the FA is correct um, before it can be written. So um, what you do is you, because you've applied the changes, you could put any code in. So if I do something stupid, so let's for example put instead of 4MA here, so let me put DDD and apply the changes. If I come up here to FA, right click and go calculate FP, should come up with an error. So it's gonna go through it, so it comes up with a no FP, can be processed, no elements, salpet, DDD. Okay, so we come into here again, Okay, got to click that, close the error. Come back to this salper element. <clears throat> Take off this DDD for M A. Put that back. Save. Puts it in order. You can put it at the end. It doesn't really have to be in order. Calculate FP. What this should do is go through. So that's correct. So that that's calculated correctly because it's given me the vehicle profile. <clears throat> so now we need to save the new FA, so then you click on save up here again, so you click on save, um, you go to the expert modes, um, go to expert mode and then we go to VCM, and then what we're going to do is we're going to load the FA file that we've just saved 
and validated. So in here we come down to the bottom, Vehicle right down the bottom here we've got a uh, vehicle order, so we open the file here. So 30th of the 8th, that's the one I've just created, PM, we open that. Um, and again what we have to do is right click on the FA again and calculate it. So it's just basically it's proving it all the way through. So calculate FP. And again, there you go, it's populated all the stuff. Okay, so that's basically told us that we've put the right entries in the file. What we need to do now is we've got to write that to the car. So down the bottom here, there's a couple of tabs. It doesn't really show very well on here, but is we're on file. If we go to master, um, we click on uh, write FAFP, then the new FA will be written to the car. So we go right FA, right FA, FP down the bottom here. So we, say, we, we know it's all correct, so we click on right. And that should be written to the car now. So what we've done is we've basically added an option list. So if I come back to the coding and would you like to reload it in module coding? Yes. So if I come back to here, we've essentially, uh, we've, we've created all the options on the list. So what we need to do is we now need to write these to the ECU. So we told the car what the options are that we think we've got installed. We need to code these to the ECUs now. So in order to do that, um, what we do is click on coding. We'll say we read the FA. So we've got the FA and that's all the stuff. So if I come down to here, come into the, sorry about the quality, I'm trying to do this on my phone at the same time as I like looking through the screen. Come down to this Salper element. What I should see on here is a big long list. And then you can see I've got my 4MA, my 488. So I can't remember the 494 that I added. Oh, that's a horrible screen. So you can see I've actually got them in there. So that's added it to the FA. Um, what we've got to do is we've got to activate the FA. So we come up to the top here, we right click and we say activate FA. Then what we've got to do, so it's given us all the options on the, the vehicle profile. And again, you can check it if you want at this point. So if you come to the option car section, open it up, you'll be able to see down here, uh, you've got the multi-function driver passenger seat. You've got the, uh, where is it, 488, lumbar support driving, etc., etc. So all the different things. That basically tells you everything that's loaded into the car. Um, so we've got SVT files. So the SVTs are the actual CPUs themselves. So you come down to the bottom right here and you say read. And what this is going to do is it's going to go away, read all the um, ECUs. And then you get a list of ECUs on the left hand side here. And essentially what you've got to do is you've got to go through, you click on the ECU, and then you click on code. So there's a button underneath code that says code do not use. Basically what that does is that resets everything to default. You do not want to do that under any circumstances. Um, please, uh, you know, I'm not going to press it to show you what happens because I don't want to get involved with that. I suspect someone maybe has done that in the past. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run through this. At the moment, the seats are installed. Um, you know, the adjustment's not working. I'm going to go through, code all these different ECUs. Um, if I get any errors, I'll show you those. Um, and hopefully at the end of this process, my seats will work. So I'm going to do the ACSM. I basically go through the one at a time so there's quite a few CPUs so um, I'm gonna do this with both hands so I'm gonna put the camera down for a second fly through these ECUs and then come back at the end so all the way through it will give you a progress report it will tell you whether it's been successful or not 
Let me just wait for this one to finish. Do do need some music on this, don't we? That'd be cool. It's quite a lengthy process. I don't expect it to take five minutes. I mean, you're doing some rewriting of ECUs and stuff like that on the car, which is a quite a scary thing. But the car doesn't bloody work at the moment anyway, so what have I got to lose? So, all through this process, you need the ignition on, but um, I mean, you can have the engine running, but it's not advisable. Um, I've just got it run with um, the, the battery monitor on it. So you can see it says finished. Um, Abertine Binder, don't know what that means. Google that, that's some German for it's okay. Click on close. <clears throat> and there you go. So it's given you the, um, the report. And the important thing at the top there is it says zero errors. And then everything in green means it's actually been coded and updated. So those CAFD files, <clears throat> they're actually in here. So that's the actual coding. That's where your coding with the car happens. Basically, each one of those needs to be updated and it says it's been done successfully. So what you can do is you can save the file that generates for that. Um, if you've got any errors, then you can go away and have a look at all the different stuff that's happening within those files. So I'm going to rip through these. There's God knows how many ECUs. I'm just going to code them all. And hopefully... Uh, what we'll do at the end, I'll come back and hopefully our seats will be working. So, uh, fingers crossed, wish me luck, and I'll speak to you in a minute. It's dark out, isn't it? Uh, what's, what happens with BMWs? Right, so we're making a bit of progress, it's still not working. <laughs> so I've been through all of the um, control ECUs that are on the list. I need to check to see if there's any that are missing, um, because I suspect that might be what part of the problem is. Um, effectively... Um, when you go through, um, I decided to code all of them because um, it's, it's quite Bohemian Rhapsody, this isn't it? Um, I decided to code all of them because I just didn't know what state they were in. And just like you, you go through and you push all your stuff through, it's fine. Um, and it's a little bit disconcerting at times because obviously as you're doing certain modules, the car starts behaving in a certain way and, you know, the screens flick on and off and things start getting reset. So like tire pressure monitoring stuff needs re reinitializing. Um, but now... So before, when I used to use the memory buttons, um, the, the seat used to go backwards and forwards slightly to the, the preset that they used to have for the tiny people that used to drive this thing. Now when I do it, I don't know if you can hear, if I do this one. Ooh. So there's actually different movements. So it's doing the, like the bolster movement. Um, and lumbar support and backwards and forwards, but the switches on the side just still don't move the seat, and the, the passenger seat is still dead. And I still have on the dash the driver restraint system, passenger restraint system. So the car knows that it's got these additional functions in the seat now, so that's good. So it's talking to all that stuff when it's telling it, and it's working when I press the memory buttons, it's not working when I press the buttons on the side of the seat. So I need to have a look and see whether anything's unplugged or snipped or anything like that because it could just be that um, the the commands not getting from the seat control to the ECU to tell it what to do so next stop not today because it's pitch black and it's getting late and I've got other things to do uh, next stop will be to um, read up a little bit more on that um, dive on some forums see what people have got <clears throat> um, thank you very much for joining me um, appreciate this isn't like the most interesting um, what am I saying of course it is um, if you want to see me suffer some more, because I'm taking baby steps in this thing, um, I really don't know what I'm doing, to be honest. Um, but we'll go there. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned. I can't see the DMEs. Um, but we are making progress. It's starting to do a few more little things now. So we'll get there. So this fuse box, so I can pull the fuse and have a look and check everything's okay. The problem I've had is access, because you have to go through the glove box. So what I've ended up doing... Taking the glove box out, that's a bit extreme, isn't it? Um, but it's interesting. It's quite easy, really. Look, there's the airbag. If you ever need to do the airbag, you have to take the glove box out and then replace that. But obviously, at the same time, you have to replace your dash because obviously that had blown through. But anyway, let's crack on. 
So I think I've got a pin problem. So on here, this is the bottom of the connector block and you can see two and three and eight are connected and then you've got the whatever. So two, one is the one on the far right, two, three, you can see silver, four, five, six, seven, the blank, eight. It's connected. I think it's 15 and 16, uh, the big spade ones at the back there. So they're connected. When you look in the back of the block, it's very difficult to see. You get something to point with. So I've got a uh, one. No, it's not focusing, is it? I've got really difficult to see. Blimey! So it's one, two, three, and then nothing, and then five and six, and then fifteen and sixteen. So I've checked in this wiring diagram that was most found on Etis, and um, effectively what it is is pin one over here comes through to pin two. So this is the multifunction switch block. So pin two is over here, it's the, the red wire. And when I do a continuity test between the two, um, it gives continuity. So that means that that wire diagram is correct and that's actually where it sends its power to. So I think what I need to do is take power from one of these. Now it's supposed to come from a 10 amp fuse. If I take a power from one of these, use an inline fuse, so I've got the 10 amp inline fuse, um, reuse this pin because this pin here um, isn't actually used at all at the moment. So if I reuse this, what are you saying? My door's open, I know my door's open. Um, splice, take this pin out, reallocate it to one. This pin isn't actually used on the current seat, so that five and six. I believe it's for the multimedia screens that these don't have, so I don't need to use them. And there's nothing on pin eight, so this is a dead wire. So if I take this out, put it there, and take power from one of these, so I believe 15, this one here, this, this big blue and red one is um, power, and the brown one is obviously ground. So if I take power from, take it across the pin one, that will give power through to the seat and then hopefully it will work. Let's give it a try. All right, okay, so don't judge. So this is all just um, twisted. I'm gonna, if this works, I will get it all soldered and heat shrinks and everything. So I've relocated that pin. It's now in pin one. Um, I've got an inline 10 amp fuse because I can't get the 10 amp connection from the thing and it comes down and takes the power. So now if I, how do I do this? Try and hold it. Put the meter in shot and I'll get my 13 volts across this pin which should mean that when it comes to here it provides power to the seat block so and like I say don't judge the um don't judge the color of the wiring or anything like that I'm just gonna sort this out later so let's Temporarily. Does the ignition need to be on? Nothing. What else, guys? I could obviously reinstate those wires easy enough, but what the hell? So this should now have power. Test that, I guess, can I? I can test that this has power, that's easy enough to do. Don't know if these are dead.
Okay, the plot thickens. Okay, so what we're going to do is use ISTA to have a look at the error codes on this thing because it, it's not complaining about driver's restraint, it's just complaining about passenger restraint. So I'm wondering if the errors are stopping the seat from working. So let's have a look at the control tree, control unit tree. If I have a look at SMFA, I think that's the driver's seat. And then because I don't have an SMFB on this, I think it comes from the IHKA. So I think. I'm not sure. I think what we need to do is get the errors up and then have a look at the errors and reset the errors so I might be able to clear the errors. So let's do a diagnostic scan. Component triggering. Oh, here we go. Look at this. Seat adjustment. Trigger component. Oh, ho, 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 yes. So, trigger component up. So, that's the driver's seat moving. So, if I use this seat height down, Seat height down. I'm going to trigger this through Esther and watch what happens with the seat. So it's, it's only the controls that aren't working. So, so how do I how do I get back to all the ECE functions? Diagnosis scan. Armrest lock switch installation. So this this is SMFA. So that's the driver's seat. And then in here, if I go into call up functions, so why is that? So SMFA has got errors. But I can control the seat backwards and forwards. Hehe, <laughs> we're getting there. I know the seat works. I know. I know the. I know the car can tell the seat what to do. Is it just that that switch block is currently getting no power? So, is it because the passenger seat is a memory seat? So I need the memory seat component function to connect up and install, so it sees SMFB. So diagnosis scan. Audio operation, flap motors, IHK indicators, user interface, component triggering. See, there's nothing on here about passenger seat. So does the car think? I don't know. I do not know. Let's go. I've been able to move the seat back so I can actually screw it down and adjust it into a position where I want and I've got the uh, memory buttons set to move it backwards and forwards so I can get forward and backward access um, which is good I just need to get power to that I think <clears throat> the issue I've got here on this seat is those two pins um, so there's one two three then four is blank five and six when you look at the wiring diagram for five and six um, where are they? Over here, so 5 and 6, they've got KCAN um, and obviously without rear seat entertainment, so I was wrong, so it still comes down to something, so let's have a look at this. 
that's got its own power from somewhere else so clearly there's a connection between those pins and the, the CAN bus so I guess if the CAN bus doesn't know that the module's there it's not going to send any information to it so uh, what I probably need to do is trace where this seat gets its connections from run wires through the harness bury them behind the dash and connect them to the CAN bus that way um, and then that should satisfy everything that's on here hopefully so I think what I'll do now is um, crack on with doing power to the switch so everything on this seat does work so it's you know, it moves backwards and forwards and um, the lumbar things go in and out etc and um, what they did when the previous memory before I wiped it um, so if I can get power to this switch because there is no power to that switch which is what it's complaining about in the memory um, I can actually probably adjust the seat via the seat controls and then that's one seat done and I can move on to getting the can sorted out on this seat then I can move on to the windows get in there slowly slowly catchy monkey so what I've done is I've spliced in the connection to pin one so interestingly um, this had all of the correct pins and everything connected already um, so there's clearly the other seat was not a mounted seat which this one is because it's got the things in the door which you can't quite see but um, anyway and um, they obviously operate differently so I need to do something on that but now watch the magic backwards and forwards <laughs> the judgery address. <laughs> it all works. So this one is it. So what I'll do is I'll take this apart, <clears throat> tidy it up, solder the connections, make sure they're absolutely permanent, and then I can bolt the seats down, make sure everything is nice and tidy, put all the trim panels back on. Along the passenger side, different kettle of fish altogether. So here's here's the block that I took out so that's the way it goes in you can see these two here um, so this uh, red and brown and brown here they're actually redundant in here so that's just like a power circuit um, for the old seat so it's got the connections across the top they all look like the same colors on the pins at the bottom you've got one two three blank and four and five in the block you've only got two and three so pin one is the power to the seat which is what I've just replicated but pins five and six that are missing on here um, are for the CAN bus. So if I pull up the, if I pull up on my piece of paper, if I pull up on my diagram here, um, they can. So I need to find out where they route through to, add them to the block, chase them through here, create a wire and then come around, and then fish them into here somewhere, probably like tap into couple of those lines um, underneath the dash um, so it's quite good that everything's open um, but what I might do is I might be able to trace where the driver's seat wires go um, and check that they're the same colors they should be because they're pretty good at color coding them so um, you can see there um, well, you can't really see but one is purple and blue and the other is purple and orange so if I can patch those into the can so those ones, no, it's not those ones, it's these ones. One is green and one is green and orange. I can patch those into the can over there and I'll check those colors on the other side. Then hopefully with power, this seat should also work. And then that'll be the retrofitted multifunction seats, which will be jobs are good in. What I need to do is order some more of these pins because I actually stole the pin from this block to use on the driver's seat. So uh, I'll get that one tidied up and I'll source some more of these pins and work out what size they are. There's a couple of different options um, and go from there. So um, hopefully next time you see this, it'll all be connected up and running. But in the meantime, I'm gonna tidy up the driver's seat and get that bolted down properly uh, and get that side all buttoned up. And then I can start cleaning things over that side, but at least that driver's seat is all done. But through the floor, little old me, retrofitting like multifunction seats, doing car electrics piece of KK. Um, I'm hoping when I connect these two, <clears throat> these two pins here, that this control module will then start um, appearing on the um, 
on the uh, ECU list because it's not at the moment I'm assuming because it can't see it it doesn't know it's there so as soon as I connect it hopefully I'll get the um, the SMFB module up here because I've only got SFMA I think that's what they are um, so we shall see anyway we'll keep moving forwards guys okay so <clears throat> I have just removed some of the errors from my screen so I'm not going to plug in and um, you can see now that the Christmas tree of lights is, is not so bad so you've got driver restraint passenger restraint initialized time monitor drivetrain so I know I've still got stuff to do under the bonnet but effectively um, what it was was the DME was all disconnected and wasn't grounded so there was no communications between the DME and the computers so I also found another wire that's completely I don't know where it plugs into um, and the connector is completely smashed so I need to do some um, work on that so what we're going to do is going to plug the computer in now and see do a scan and see what errors we've got so bear with us kids Right, while well, this is doing its checks, obviously there's a lot of errors. I've got 140 errors on here. Um, because I've now connected the DME, currently here, if I press the mode buttons, that's it. Um, if I press the mode buttons, everything's firing itself back together. I can turn the traction control off, and I can change the dampers. And I can change the gear change. Steering wheel doesn't want to do anything. That's just stuck in comfort for some reason. So I'm not sure what happens with, with that button. Don't know what these buttons down here do either. What's what is this? Something what that does. It's not doing anything. But hopefully soon this will be finished and I'll be able to have a look at the errors. So I've got 140. We'll have a look at them. What we'll do is we'll clear everything because there's obviously a lot of errors built inside so we'll clear everything from the previous stuff and then do another test and then see what we get with so what i've done is i've cleared the memory and it's restarted and now it's coming up with 28 and that looks like a lot better christmas tree so basically the dme was not connected and that's causing all sorts of power issues across all the modules because obviously expecting them to be there so um, let's have a look at what errors it's calling about now right I'm gonna move back to getting these seats because this one's up in the air and I want to get this working so I'll come back to the engine got a lot of work to do under there um, so I've got the driver's seat in that all works and um, this is obviously missing some stuff so I need to create um, pin 1 which is the one on the far right um, and pin 5 and 6 so I've got some spare pins I've got some auto wire um, it's actually heavier duty than this stuff um, so pin 1 I'm going to take the power from the power connection that is snipped in here somewhere this one so I'll take the power from here or I could actually run up do an add a fuse rather than going on the back of that um, and then pins five and six actually are the bus relay so i need to fish them through all the way back up around the back find the right color wires to splice into and then splice into those wires somewhere um, i don't know whether that's going to be best to do it on the back of the um, head unit or whether i can find some cables somewhere else that are the same but i need to make sure i've got exact right ones but um let's get to doing that i guess um what i'm going to do is create the create the connections um, for the pins get that all soldered up and then what we'll do is we'll come out and we'll fish some wire through last one do this tape we do that um, and then fish it back under the car etc pull all this stuff out work it up there and work out where I need to splice it into um, and then I don't know whether I need to tell the car that I've got a new module um, that's gonna be a fun one to do um, but we'll, we'll give that a try as well so then I can get this in and that will hopefully get rid of the passenger restraint system that's up on the dash here as you can see there's no driver restraint system because I've had that cleared now because this seat is in and working yeah baby let's motor on So the cables are in the harness. I'll do the pinout diagram for that. I've run them through, it comes across. This just pops up, and um, there's like four connectors underneath here. Tuck it behind here, up 
here so the red is going to be my power which I'll take to this um, uh, adder fuse that I've put through there so I don't have to go around the back of the glove box or around the back of the fuse box and this, these blue and green that's for the can, that's the bus. So I need to find <coughs> which cables these are going to go into now um, and splice it in. I need to be really careful about that. I need to probably follow something from somewhere else. Right, okay. Don't know if you can see this. Is this so? This is the passenger seat module that I've connected the wires, so five and six. I wasn't able to get any orange wire, so I've, I've got blue. It's different. Um, but I've got green and blue, so green is on 5, which is green wire, and blue is on 6 for the passenger seat module. So it comes out, goes up to 5, comes across here, which we follow down, actually goes to the rear passenger or rear compartment automatic climate control, which is this thing here. So what I'm going to do is take the wires that run from the seats, <clears throat> I've fed them through the centre console, I've just pulled the pins out. I'm going to see if I can splice them in. So I've connected green to green and blue to orange. I know I'd have loved to have orange cable, but I haven't. Um, and I'm going to see if I can get everything else working. So the seat is connected. It doesn't have power to the switch. I still have to do power to the switch. But if I can get this connected and I can control it, I need to inject the software code and then I can control it via um, the software. That will then give me time to then wire up the switch and then it should all work. So that's temporarily connected, so let's see what happens. <laughs> Check this. So this down here, SM6D, I believe that is the driver's seat. SM6E, this is the passenger seat. So I think what I need to do is code. Let's have to open this up. Edit the FDL. I'll do this for our screen capture. I think what I need to do is code this module to the car, and then I can jump into Hista. Yeah, there's the seat module. go back right so if I click on and say code please activate the FA first okay so we go okay activate FA Takes a while. Takes a while for focus as well. Right, now, if I come to here and go code, get a little gem on the screen. Don't know what that means. Tell word generate. Generate? Read SVT before tail connection started. So I might have to inject a new CAFD because it looks like they're different dates. So my 6D is 10.0601 and my 6E is 10.0404, so it's fairly close. If it works, I don't care. And then if this does work, what I can do is take this mishmash patch, bring this back here, splice him back here somewhere, splice him back here somewhere. Because apparently from the wiring diagram, when you look at the wiring diagram, while well that's doing that. So on here you've got the, let's get this in the sun so we can see. On here you've got the driver seat module and that comes across to the sensor console armrest and then the passenger seat module 
and that comes across to the center of our mouse connection. So at least they're both connected in, rather than trying to run something through around the back of the dash and connecting it there. Right. It says green close, and it says CD deploy finished. So close that, disconnect this, close connection, yes. Okay, let's go and see if we can control it. I am so happy. Look at that. So SMFA is the driver's seat. SMBF is the passenger seat. So I'm going to try SMBF. Pull up ECU functions. I wonder if this will actually. So the switch on the side still won't work. Computer. Okay, so we go to component triggering. Seat adjustment. Right. Seat height up. Fingers crossed, what's going to happen? Oh. Seat height down, ready? Yeah, it falls over because it's not bolted in. <laughs> yeah, baby! Um, okay. Uh, where that used to be, I think it needs to be more forward. Forward, back, so trick, uh, so let's go. Backwards. Oh, so you have to click on trigger component again, turn it off. Seat backwards. So I can I've got enough room now to fish all this through. So I can fish all this through, get the seat in place, and then if I connect the power from there, then the seat belt should work. But in order to do that, what I'm going to do is do the power on the driver's seat properly as well. So let me just do a diagnosis scan. Um, so I have to turn that off. Diagnosis scan, identification, ECU tests, so ECU performing, so undo, clear fault memory, trigger component, fault memory was cleared, close. Should we do a vehicle test? So I've got fault memory of four. That would just be the switch. So if I display the fault memory. No current coding data set stored. SMBF coding data error. Coding data. 
data error, but it works. Switch block from passenger, not working. And physical bus full. So I think what I'm going to do. delete all that and then I'm going to do a full test. Okay so I've still got an amber alert on this and that is because I haven't powered up the switch block. I don't know what that is, output terminal, that's like something's unplugged on that ground. But anyway so up here so this is the jet control, fuel reserve, time monitor. So the time monitor initializes when you drive, drive train drive moderately, which is all engine gearbox, which we know we've got to get to anyway. But the uh, passenger restraint, all that sort of stuff is gone. So the reason that it's showing amber is because this, because I do not have power. But if I calculate test plan, so I think if I just go through these, so short circuit, throttle valve potential, or oh, throttle potential, it's a short circuit to be, short circuit to ground. So we've got some throttle valves, teach again, communication, private can missing. Private can, so there's stuff that's unplugged, I need to work out, signal wheel, switch block, seat memory, passenger LIN bus, sweet seat memory. So that's the thing with the door. That's this thing over here so I need to I've got a, a connector coming for that um, and um, again it's similar to one of these where you have the um, the connector I'll, I'll pull up the separate one for that but I'm basically gonna it's got three pins on it so it's got um, the power going to it and then it's got the bus connections and the bus connections I'll dolly into the stuff that comes from the mirror um, so then that seat connections will work. But until I get all that done, the seat stuff will, SMBF will still say Ember. Um, so I will need to work on that. But I think if I've got the power seat sorted out, sort this one out, the top one, um, then that's the best one. So I calculate the test plan. That'll give us a hit list of things to go through with the test plan and tell us where to investigate. Um, so then I'll be able to get the seats in. So then the only thing really not working inside here is the front windows. Um, and I think that's to do with the errors on the FRM and the CAS. So there's something to do with power. I think it's this terminal 15. This down here, terminal 15 outputs. But you can see sit switch block front passenger fix that. Terminal 15 is something to do with power or ground. This is the electric motor, DME, throttle, that's engine. I'm not sure what that is, I have to have a look at that. But we're getting there. So when we started this we had something like 200 errors I think. I think I'm down to 27 at the moment. I mean I've not started to try driving the car yet. The car won't start. But we shall um, Got too many errors. I'm, I'm guessing that the car won't even try and turn over because there's errors at the moment. So I'm going to get these seats all tidied up, <clears throat> get that power source to the switch, get all this bolted in, get the carpets and everything. Um, I'll leave the glove box open for the moment, I think, because I don't know if I need to get to modules and stuff. Um, and then when this is all nice and clean and tidy, um, start looking at the next bits. Yeah, baby. So we are getting closer and closer. So I've I've hooked up to DME. I don't know if there's supposed to be two on there or not. I'll find out. I'm sure there's supposed to be probably two because um, it does say bank one when you hover over it. Cylinder bank one. But I'm not getting a any other issues. So I've cleared all the seat stuff. That's all working. The seats are all plugged in. The only thing that I need to do is on the driver's door. So down here. There's memory buttons and it's complaining because it's saying that they're not connected, which I know they're not connected because they're not connected. So I need to um, 
do the wiring on that. But look at this control tree now. So it's only the FRM, DME and the ICM that's left to be a bit of an issue. So I'll carry on working through. One thing I did notice also was the, uh, this isn't where I live so that's fine, but the sat nav is completely wrong. So I don't know what that's about. I don't know whether when I start moving it will work or whether it's a calibration thing. So I'll work out onto that. Um, I know people have said that <clears throat> it can be a couple of meters off or something, but you know, that's, that's a hundred miles off, if not more. So I don't know. I don't know. I'll work it out. Yeah. Yeah, it's right down in Ashford in Kent. Oh, it's got the European maps. That's cool. Wow. Anyway, I digress. So, we're not there. We should be... somewhere much further away. So, I need to keep working through these, but the seats were all in, which is fantastic, and I'm going to talk you through what I did for that. <laughs> right. Ah, oh, I need a shave. Um, cool, seats are in, they're all working, um, which is fantastic. So, the, the driver's door has the memory functions, the, the seat side, you probably hear this. Oh, let me come forward. Ooh. So these all work now. Um, the passenger seat also works, uh, which is fantastic. So on the driver's seat, um, so this car used to have the sport seats, which were called the 481s. Um, and these seats are not 481s, these are not seat, for sport seats. These are multifunction seats from what I can understand. So just to recap what I had to do. Um, so first of all, you have to tell the car that you've got multifunction seats. So you use um, the computer system. So you use ESIS to change your um, computer uh, settings, not your computer settings, to change your car settings to tell it it's got the, the 4MA, which is the multifunction seats. Um, so you remove 481 and you add 4MA in the FA, um, which is the vehicle options. And then you have to go through and you have to basically you code the car each of the modules you have to code the relevant modules to say that this is the vehicle options that it comes with so you go through and you push all that out to the um, the seat modules and the frm and everything um, and basically that tells the car that you've got these seats then so that then from the computer's perspective knows what it's looking for then you start getting different lights on the dash because it's complaining because it can't communicate with the seats properly it's not getting the, the switch gear working so um for the driver's seat um, and I don't know where this is going to be in all cases where you go from a sports seat to the, the multifunction seat. Um, all the pinouts were there. Everything was there because it has the memory function. All the pinouts were there. So I'm assuming that the previous seat didn't have a memory function because it wasn't on the door card. Um, and the pinouts were completely different in the, the block. And I'll, I'll show you the pinouts that I'm referring to. I'll, I'll pull up a diagram. Um, so basically pin one was missing. And pin one was power for the switch so the switch down on the side here so what i've done is i've opened up the glove box um, i've taken all of that stuff out to get to the fuse box that's behind there there's a fuse that's designated for the seats i think it's 67 or something like that. it's a 10 amp fuse um i've i couldn't get to the back of that so there's no way of like me pulling all that apart i could have spent ages trying to get all that working so i got an adder fuse from halfords um, and used that essentially so you put that in line Put two 10 amp fuses so it provides the original circuit and it gives you a 10 amp circuit off the end of that and then i've run a power cable all the way from there behind the dash all the way behind the dash so you have to sort of take some of these panels down down through the side so you take up the um the, the stuff that's holding the trim down you, you peel it up the side and you fish that wire all the way through um and then you basically you end up with a wire that's right next to your um your harness um, and you can't just like plug the wire in, you have to get the, the connectors. So I ordered from eBay um, some um, BMW um, connectors, repair connectors. You get like a strip of 10 of them. There's a couple of quiz, like $3.99. Uh, and then basically you have to make sure you do like a nice good connection on those because it's got to fit through um, the, uh, the connector block to actually click in. They click in, they click out. 
Um, but if you do it too messily, and I wanted to have a solder connection, so I knew it was all solid, and my wire was a bit heavy gauge. Um, so you have to make sure that's all nice and tidy, and then that just basically clicks in. So you can check that to make sure you're getting power, um, and uh, you can run that. So you can run a meter across that and make sure you're getting the 12 volts across the circuit and find a ground somewhere on the car. Um, that was working. You plug that in, and then all of a sudden, as if by magic, the um, C control will start working. So you can adjust the seats as you need, which is fantastic. So that's fixed that one. Going across to the passenger seat, completely separate kettle of fish, completely different. Um, it was basically missing several pins. Um, there was three in total. Um, I didn't check all of them. I thought I'm just going to work out there's a power they're missing, the same as the driver's seat, which is easy to do. You just run the same thing as from the other fuse. You run the cable down, you fish it through, you get the spade connector, and it flows into the block, and away you go. <clears throat> but it's still not talking to the car. So the two other pins that was missing, and I'll bring the diagram up and I'll circle them. The two pins that was missing were pins five and six. And when you look at the diagram, uh, five and six are for the CAN bus relay. So I've got some wire, I've got some spare pins. I will um, solder them on and I'll stick them in the block and I'll fish the wire through. But then I started looking at well, where am I going to connect this to? Because it doesn't really, you know, it's not easy to go behind the dash and stuff. But when you look on the diagram, and I'll bring this up as well, when you look on the diagram, the front seat, the driver's seat, and the passenger seat, they all go through and they connect through to the rear air conditioning or the rear climate control console. So on the back of that, there's a plug that you can take off and you're looking for pins. You have to take the connector apart. You have to get the connector block out from it. But it's basically it's pins three and four, I think. I'll double check. Um, but um, one of them is green and the other one is orange with a green stripe. Um, so what I did to, to double check it was I just pulled those pins out from the connector block. Didn't worry about that rear unit. Just twisted the bare wires around the, the connector, the, the pin that was um, taken out from the block. Just put some electrical tape around it to make sure it didn't short. Reset the errors from the car so that it, I wasn't dealing with any stuff that wasn't needed. And lo and behold, all of a sudden, the seat would move. So you could control it through... Um, through whatever the program's called, it's not ESIS, it's the other one. Um, I'll put the name down at the bottom anyway, and I'll, I'll show you some, you know, there's loads of stuff in the video beforehand. Um, and then with the power on the switch, all of a sudden, you know, the, the, the seat starts moving backwards and forwards as well. So once you've got all that, you clear all the errors in the car, and essentially, because you've got these components that you've told the car about, and it can't communicate with them, lots of different modules start having lots of different issues um, with um, communication it thinks things aren't working and it, well it, they aren't because you haven't connected them so once you've connected it all up you clear all those memories down and i've literally gone down to three modules now that i have an issue with one of them is dme because there's all sorts of things unplugged under the engine that i still need to take care of one of them is the frm which is all to do with i believe the, the front windows that's why the front windows won't work so I need to have a look at that FRM. And the other one was ICM, I think. I'll bring up the picture again. But essentially, the inside of this car, I'm going to leave the glove box out for the moment because it's going to be easier to get if I need to do any more wiring on there. I might not. I might put it back so it's all complete, put the carpets in, start giving the leather a clean. But essentially, the inside of this car is now working. The sunroof works. Had to reinitialize that. The only thing that's not working in this cabin right now are the front windows. And that is to do with the FRM. So... I am absolutely over the moon. I was panicking when I realised that the seats that were in the car were not the same as the seats that came out of the car. I thought they just did a colour change, but clearly it wasn't just a colour change. Um, so, you know, if you are doing a... I've probably waffled on, you've probably all left by now. Um, if you are doing a multifunction seat conversion in your BMW F10 M5 from a sport seat, then drop us a line, you know, stick some comments, and I'll be happy to send you any information I've got. Um, if you're in the area, I'll be happy to spend like 15 minutes with you and um, work out what you need to do. Um, it all works for me. <coughs> I'm over the moon. I can start moving on to bigger and better problems now, uh, such as the engine. Um, but we're getting there. Um, so get all this tidied up, and next time round uh, we'll be... Popping the bonnet, 
um, having a look under there and working out what on earth we have to do. I know I've got some connectors missing. I know I've got a broken plug in there that I need to try and find a replacement for. Um, but bloody hell, I, I'm amazed that I've got this far. There's lots of cleaning up to do. I need to tidy up some of these other bits and that'll be done in a separate episode. But uh, as far as getting it together and clearing the errors, I've reset and cleared everything down that needs to be cleared. And now we can start working on the main problem. Happy days. Right, that's it for today then, because the seats are in, they're all working. Um, thank you very much for making it to the end. If you like what you've seen, you found it helpful, please hit that like and subscribe button. Um, if you're still here, give us a hash brown. No one's giving me a hash brown still watching at the end. Give me a hash brown still watching. Give me a hash brown. I really want a hash brown still watching in the comments. Um, i make my day. Put a smile on this old man's face. Look at this beard, it's all going grey. Um, anyway, I'm going to be moving on to the engine next, like I said. So um, until next time, we'll see you in another morning. Cheers, guys.